Good morning. My name is Wayne Reed, Assistant Section Manager for Training for the Alabama Section. This morning, we're going to go over the Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network, or ARDEN. The Amateur Radio uh, Emergency Data Network has been around for quite a while. Uh, it, uh, it's an outgrowth of the ARRL working group called High Speed Multimedia. And also, you can probably remember uh, uh, hearing about broadband hamnet, BBHN. That's been around for 10 or 12 years. Uh, Arden has, is ongoing, and it is a, uh, it's a, it's a great uh, mesh networking architecture, and we'll go over that in depth. The Arjun project uh, itself has developed software support for uh, 70 commercial wireless routers, just like you'd use in your home, and uh, moving them from the Part 15 allocation into the Part 97 for amateurs and, and uh, has been instrumental in getting some uh, bandwidth allocated on 900 megahertz, 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz bands, and uh, expand it, creating an inexpensive way for hams to implement high-speed internet up to 144 meg uh, data networks in support of emergency operations, uh, not only at EOCs, but uh, uh, throughout your, uh, your local area using common off-the-shelf hardware. With the advancement of uh, networking hardware and inexpensive point-to-point -point, uh, data links, the Arjun project has allowed uh, the use of that common off-the-shelf hardware available through a variety of sources to be upgraded to the Arden firmware and thus be used on the amateur uh, bands allocated uh, for 2.4 and, uh, and 5 gigahertz along with 900 megahertz. Uh, a great advancement. It's easy to do and readily available. If you really want to explore the uh, Arden Mesh architecture, the best place to go uh, to do any of that is ardenmesh.org, ardenmesh.org. And the uh, nice thing about this site, it's got everything you need. It's well laid out, and it will give you all the documentation that you need uh, to convert any of the uh, available hardware, compatible hardware, over to the Arden firmware. So in order to find out what hardware is available for conversion, you need to go under Docs and then Latest. Click on Latest. And over here, you'll see a section that says Selecting Radio Hardware. If you click on that, you go down in the middle of the page, you'll see Device Selection Chart. That is an Excel spreadsheet, and you can download that spreadsheet. It will give you all of the current hardware that is supported uh, for the Arden Mesh Network. It will also give you on the left side there all of these uh, uh, informational pages on how to set up your firmware and uh, get get going for the first time. Great, great web page. And everyone here in uh, North Alabama that has uh, went on to the Arden Mesh Network has a really uh, found it beneficial to go to this page and read the how-to guides uh, also that are available there. So what's the benefit of having a, a mesh network versus a star topology network? Well, star topology is what, how your house is set up. Your uh, computer is talking to your local router or switch or modem. That modem is tied to a centralized modem or switch, and that's how you get your internet. With a star topology, uh, if if you lose your computer, you lose the internet. With the um, mesh network, all of the nodes are interconnected with their own uh, multiple uh, data paths. So if you lose one data path between between uh, computers, you've got additional resources through a different data path, and you never know it's offline or uh, lose your connectivity. So it's a, it's a great benefit, especially for things like Aries Races and supported agencies, served agencies. For instance, hospitals. Five hospitals could be tied together on one mesh network, all interact with one another through a common server. 
uh, with telephone, uh, email traffic, uh, lists, all the normal internet services could be provided by an Aries Racies group, uh, given a, uh, a localized uh, loss of infrastructure. So it's it's of great benefit. Also could be used uh, with just a large amateur radio club and tie several uh, several members together into a nice little uh, private uh, mesh network of your own. So why is Arden Mesh a valuable asset for Aries Racy's communications? Well, take a look at this diagram in the red. We have four repeater sites. And let's say the upper left repeater, top left, has internet. You could create a backbone, as long as those repeaters were line of sight, create a backbone using Arden and provide internet services to all the remaining three repeaters and uh, thus have the ability to run WinLink or those uh, programs associated uh, with internet services. You also could, uh, gives you the ability to uh, do control uh, changes to the repeaters uh, via the internet. Uh, and makes it a lot easier rather than have to drive to them. In addition, let's say on the right-hand side, uh, you have a high population area, a, an urban area with multiple hospitals and served agencies in, in orange, and they have a computer outage or they have some kind of catastrophic event. As long as one of those uh, blue repeater sites is working, the remainder of the served agencies will also have internet via that backbone. Same thing on the left-hand side of the diagram. And when you lose internet on one side or the other, as long as all of the nodes are tied together via the mesh network, uh, you would never know that you lost, lost a data link. So it's a very valuable tool, especially for served agencies that are all meshed together. If one site one remaining site has internet and the Arden network is up, they will all have internet. In addition, you can have a, a Raspberry Pi server that is on the network at any one of these repeater sites. And that would give you, uh, provide telephone services from one side of that mountain range to the other. So it's got a lot of flexibility. It's a valuable tool for Aries Races. Uh, it's especially valuable if you can put in some permanent nodes as shown in red there with a the backbone. I wanted to uh, take a minute and uh, define what an Arden node really is. And of course, to be of benefit to emergency operations, it needs to be self-sufficient as far as power is concerned. So uh, we operate ba battery power. Uh, the entire nodes pull about four and a half to six watts, depending on the the uh, radio hardware that you choose. The radios typically run on 600 milliwatts and can travel, as uh, we said earlier, uh, from 500 feet in some cases to 30 miles. So that's all defined by the hardware choices that you make. But we have a uh, power distribution for coming from the battery. We send that out to a five slot uh, managed switch we also need to provide 24 volts to the radios. So we do that through a DC to DC converter. Now we'll be uh, talking a little bit more in depth about each of these components here in, in, a, uh, in a minute. Uh, the way the Arden Mesh Network works is you can have a variety of components to provide the services that you need to your served agencies or to the network. This is a series of Arden nodes that uh, KM4CJ Steve uh, put together here for the Madison County uh, Emergency Management Agency. And as you can see by the boxes, there's a variety of different types that we've, uh, we've put together. It gives us a nice amount of flexibility. Uh, the uh, small little wireless antenna uh, that you see on the left-hand boxes is where we provide uh, local Wi-Fi so that you've got connectivity to your laptop. So a node would consist of a laptop. The battery is self-contained in those boxes. A laptop, 
uh, one of these node boxes and the necessary cabling uh, to go from the box to the radio and from the box to the internet is required. This diagram shows internally uh, uh, in the internal box and, and the, the components that we've got arranged in there. And uh, numerically, they're available on the next slide as kind of a bill of material of what we tried to do here. The uh, radios uh, get their power with power over Ethernet. The managed switch that we have chosen uh, provides that power uh, in some cases. And in some cases, we use an injector, which is seen here uh, with the little black extra cables that are uh, internal to the box. So uh, you've got a variety of hardware choices that you can make. It all depends on what you, and how you want to set up your topology. This slide references the previous slide and gives you the location and approximate cost of the item shown uh, in, the, in the box uh, in each of the nodes. And this one relates to the previous slide numerically. So it kind of gets you an idea of uh, what the costs are associated with it. And also in the previous slide, there is no battery shown, but in the nodes that we provided to the EMA, the battery is internal and that, that box will run at least 12 to 15 hours uh, without a recharge on the battery. So on the, uh, on the nodes that we provi provided to the EMA, you've got the ability to run off internal battery or you can have an external 12 volt source. But this uh, relates to the numeric figures in the previous slide. Uh, this slide is, shows you the uh, locations and the relative costs of a couple of the uh, radio choices that we've made uh, all available on Amazon. And again, depending on the hardware that you choose, uh, you, may go, uh, you may go 20 miles. You may set it up so that you only go 500 feet. That's your choice. This particular slide shows uh, several of the uh, test, test setups that we've been using around uh, Madison County for a variety of tests that we've accomplished. Our longest uh, backhaul uh, link that we've made is 23 miles. We had 32 megabits of, uh, of Ethernet available bandwidth, so more than enough, more than adequate to send uh, video. We had telephone running video and point-to-point -point, uh, file transfers. So uh, this is a, a few of the setups that we used. Uh, this is a, an overview of the network that we set up and test uh, here in Madison County. We do have a Raspberry Pi server running on the network, and that provides uh, PBX uh, support for the telephone connectivity between nodes. So and it all depends on what you what you want to set up, how many different nodes you have, and what the served agencies need as support. So hopefully uh, this will give you a, an idea of the flexibility of the Arden Mesh Network. I hope this overview has provided uh, some insight as to uh, the Arden Mesh Network for amateur radio uh, data connectivity. If you have any questions, please contact me, K4TTZ at ARRL.net. Thank you.